journalist, as always, just jump into it. Hello, everybody, and welcome, welcome to the next episode, episode 42 of Chaluminati Podcast. As always, I am one of your three hosts, Mike Martin, and joined by my other two co-hosts, Alex Fasciane, who I'm hey. still not particularly comfortable you not having a beard. I it's coming back pretty it is pretty quickly. It does come you back very quickly credit. for you anyway, unlike me. Yeah, but I'm put I'm pushing it out every day. You you got that you know you got that borderline like when you go real low and you just go like a mustache, you kind of got like you, you're still very welcoming looking, but you're like borderline serial killer. I I know I, I I there's there's people who are much less polite about that on this internet. <laughs> Just, and uh and obviously our other co-host Jesse Cox who did not shave his beard and who I don't think I have ever 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 seen in my whole like six years knowing you now without a beard. I think the last time I didn't have a beard was 2010 maybe yeah <laughs> maybe. <laughs> what do you think? What do you what do you think? What are the what's the over under on you going to like another smooth face? Um, maybe for my wedding day. Okay. Ooh, yeah. Maybe. You know right. what? I feel, like, I, I feel I, like that's appropriate, but I'd have to marry someone who wants to be with me. And that person <laughs> probably is down for the beard. So it might not happen. And preferably <laughs> who makes delicious homemade tortillas. Here's the thing. Look, if there is a, <laughs> just like a sweet, I'm going to say 60 plus little Mexican <laughs> woman out there. Who's just like, <laughs> wants to make me. Fresh homemade tortillas, and then I just come home every day. By come home, I mean leave the room where I record, and then downstairs. Yeah, and then we just like hold each me. other, and she feeds me delicious tacos. Oh my god, that sounds I see, great. I have the image of you being cradled like a baby. She's stroking the top of your head while the other hand feeding you tortillas. Oh, that it's sounds. You it's gonna be okay, baby. Perfect. Oh yeah, and then we'll watch like uh, Netflix shows. Well, Netflix and chill, but by chill I mean literal. We'll just like drink horchata. And have the best <laughs> life ever. True love. Yeah. True love comes in all packages, all sizes. Yeah, no, it's true. All, just all put people it, just can put be it in out love there. with each other. I well, love that. This is going to be an Alex episode today. So I hope you're, as always, very prepared because you don't know what you're going to get in an Alex episode. And that's exciting. Before we even go that way, we've got a big announcement to make. For a couple of years, I just want to say thank you for the support. Like, Chiluminati was something we just kind of started and was just like, this would be fun. We're all interested in this stuff, and I think we could, you know, have a good time talking about it. And it's grown and grown over the two years. It's and one extremely of the things, validating. It's it extremely is, validating. It certainly pads the ego nonsense. that needs to be it's padded nonsense. inside me. It's an hour of <laughs> nonsense. But you all listen, and we, we thank you for that. And for basically since we started, you've been asking for weekly episodes, which we would love to do. And, uh, you know, as well as ways to directly support us through either, you know, merch buy or Patreon or whatever. So with that said, we're going to go ahead as people have requested and we are going to open up a Patreon uh, opening up the day this episode goes live. And what this is going to allow us to do is that we love doing this. This is a fantastic uh, podcast to do, but each episode requires an insane amount of, of work, usually research, writing things up especially the multi-parters. So in order for us to want to do this once a week, we got to make sure like we are, we have enough viability to move forward. And so the one and only goal that we have is 5,000 a month. And if we hit that goal, we will go ahead and do weekly episodes of Chaluminati podcast. That'll allow us to take the time out of our schedules to do research, to write up scripts, to schedule things, to make sure if, we have, if we're going to be gone a week, we double up. Basically just allows us the time to put into the uh, Chaluminati beyond what we already do. Um, again, we can't thank you enough for the insane support on this podcast. And we are very excited to see what 2020 brings. There are just going to be two simple tiers. The one dollar tier, which will give you it's just kind of like a throw a little something our way as a thanks and access to the to the community discord that'll be connected to Patreon and the fifteen dollar tier that is just going to give you a green name in discord. But on top of that, after every episode of the Chaluminati podcast, we'll have a 15, 20 minute mini episode where we kind of talk about uh, paranormal news of the week or just weird things happening in our world and current events and stuff like that. And once we do like four or five of those. We'll bundle those. They'll be timed exclusive for Patreon, and then we'll release them as a one full episode. So you'll probably get like one of those every couple of months if you're not a patron. If there's anything else that I can not ramble about, boys, feel free to take it away. But I feel like, you know, I just uh, wanted to get it all you're out You're laying there. it out perfect. This yeah, is just, exactly what we want to do. Like, this is the way that we're going to do this where it becomes more than just a hobby for exactly. us, right? Right now, if you're happy with what you've got, you don't have to do anything and you're going to get at least that going forward. Plus these extra uh, episodes every once in a while that are us just going over headlines and whatnot. 
Uh, and that's just for doing absolutely nothing. But if you got a little extra spank in the bank, is that what people say? That is that? not what they say. <laughs> if they, okay, well, if they do, if they do say that, and they do have that, mm, you no, know, you got a little, no one says that. little cream on the top of just the crop. You know no, what I'm saying? Got to work no it out. One. Work it out. A little cheese and the cheese grater. You, you know, know what I'm saying? Got a little bit of that. Just focus really hard. Mm. And if you then got once a little bit there, once it's there. No, you got a little bit of money in the wallet, no right on that. top. Send it our way. No, uh, <laughs> and we'll make it worth your while. You get you get a you get an episode every week if enough people get on board. And I feel like that's I feel like that's what I would everybody love to wants. Just do anyway. this fucking <laughs> like every week. I love this. Yeah. I love doing this podcast. So it's great. So what's the so what's the URL for people to go to that Patreon? It it is patreon.com slash chaluminati pod. Very very simple. Uh, just check it out over there. Like I said, three simple tiers with the goal below. We want to do this every week, and with your help, we can. Yeah, no pressure. Just no, just some extra if you want. Yep. And with that, the reins are in your hands, Mr. Fasciane. <sighs> okay. All right. <laughs> look, 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 look. I know that I swore off doing modern internet mysteries because they're crazy and they're always insane and really weird in favor of better older legacy mysteries like the giant JFK thing I'm about to do. Uh, I'm an, And I'm going to still do that. But since we needed another episode or two in the can before diving like whole dick into the Skinwalker Ranch, yeah. which we're uh, going to do oh. soon. No, we're, we're on our way right here, boys. Can I just tell yeah. you, diving a whole dick into the Skinwalker Ranch is the best <laughs> innuendo I've ever heard. <laughs> ever. I'm ready to do ever. it literally. <laughs> I'm ready to literally do that. You make you just make me a hole. You are just ready. make me a hole and I'll dive right in. <laughs> That's so bad. That's Here's so disgusting. Thing, that hole, that skinwalker ranch hole that you slide your inself into, there's no bottom. Stop this. That's what I'm saying. Stop. Yeah, you can you. go all Stop. dick. Yeah, there, it's whole dick, then some, and then you, you just can, get eaten. Then your by body it. folds yeah. in half backwards, and then your whole body this. goes. And then by the time no. you realize you're in a sarlacc pit, it's way too late. <laughs> no, stop. And then you look like a skinwalker. All right. But because of that, because we have this extra little nugget of time, I figured, you know what? Why not take one last ride about around this weird cyber mystery block? And I and I'm gonna do it with with probably the most famous of these mysteries that you of all of them, uh, and but one that I think most people don't know the whole deal with. So I'm just gonna say it. Say it with me if you know it at home. Cicada thirty three zero one. I have. Okay. Yeah. So I'm sure everybody's heard of this. Uh, maybe, I don't know. I'm basing this, for example, just to give you an idea of how big this one is, I'm basing this uh, episode, or episodes, depending on how long we go, off of a Rolling Stone article. Okay. So wow. it was like a major magazine article by David Kushner, January of 2015. And uh, stuff has happened since then, but I'll let you know about that as we get there. Before we move uh, forward, just like yeah. all I know about Cicada is like, it was maybe a recruitment program for something. Yes. And that's it. Yes, that's all that's I know. <laughs> That's it kind is. of that's, yeah. Oh, it's it's considered to be the first major ARG. Yeah, it's like a mm. it's mm -hmm. like a that makes um, sense. it's like the first one that's like, is this an ARG? You know right, what I mean? Like right. it, yeah. And uh, basically, it's it's super crazy. It's super neat, and it goes a lot deeper than people realize. So why don't you get a glass of apple juice or <laughs> some bugles, whatever you guys use? <laughs> get a slice of key lime snacks? pie. Yeah, a little, little slice, slice of, of orgasmic pie. key lime pie. Put on your brand pie. new Beatles album. <laughs> yeah. I am brand new. Relax. Right. Yeah. Kick Let back, go. kick your toes up. Kick your toes up. That's what <laughs> right. I say. Uh, it's story time again. This time, the story starts with two 15-year-old boys called Marcus and Tech. This worries me. This is a worrying beginning. Yeah. So back in uh, the first few days of January of 2012, when all of this got started, uh, this, this guy Marcus, he was like a sheltered kind of homeschool style kid. He literally was a boy scout. He followed the rules like down to the letter and he was literally one, he would literally was a boy scout, like actually in nature, a boy scout, not just like how captain America is a boy scout, but like he was like one project away from hitting Eagle scout. Uh, just to give you an idea of the type of guy that he is. And then tech that is not that guy's real name, but he's like super serious about anonymity he was a high school nerd at the time. He was the webmaster for his campus newspaper and he coded like little weird projects on the side. So both young, but you know, a little bit more like because Marcus was homeschooled, he had the ability to just sort of like do whatever, even though his parents really didn't let him like fuck around online that much because he was still pretty young. 15 is pretty young. 
and and Texas same way, uh, but he had a more traditional high school career. But either way, between January 5th and January 7th of 2012, both of them came across an image that was making the rounds on 4chan that was literally just white font on a black background, and it just read like this. Hello, we are looking for highly intelligent individuals. To find them, we have devised a test. There is a message hidden in this image. Find it, and it will lead you on the road to finding us. We look forward to meeting the few that will make it all the way through. Good luck. 3301. Okay. So that was the first point of contact for this mystery. Marcus joined the IRC chat about it like almost immediately. Uh, but Tech, uh, you know, he was a little more nervous about just jumping right into something from 4chan. 4chan has a bad reputation. I want to point out because they said it in this article that he called it the chamber pot of the internet, which I thought was a hilarious <laughs> thing. It's not important, but I just thought it was funny. Uh, but anyway, Tech saw someone uh, on the IRC chat, which I don't know if you guys know what IRC is, but back in the day, it was a lot more prevalent than it is now. It's kind of like the precursor to like your discords and your Skype. What is the, yeah. uh, what is what, internet relay chat, I think? Yeah, something, something like, like that. that. It's like a giant dynamic chat room, basically, that is based around like topics, like rooms are created around hashtags, basically. Uh, also, just for okay. the sake of, uh, if we're going to talk about, you know, Things like this. ARG is either an alternate or altered or whatever the case may be, reality game. And the whole point is that it's something where uh, you and many other people get together to solve a riddle that is, it takes place in, you know, the real world, but is not a real thing. Maybe. maybe. Right? Yeah, maybe. Uh, a great right. example is a game that came out several years ago. Um, they made an alternate reality game where the result was you literally had to go to an island off the coast of Seattle and go dig up a thing that gave you an answer that led you to another clue. So, like, they do this all the time. I think Fortnite was another one that did it. Yeah. Uh, I, by there's the always, did it. Like, there's yeah. always, like, an element of fun to them. They're very romantic. Like, people really enjoy Pressure doing hunts. them. Right. And a lot of the time, they are a advertisement for something, like, above mm -hmm. everything. Right. Uh, the Joker. But even any, in, in the Batman, the the... the uh, Dark, Dark Knight, Knight, yeah. The Joker had an ARG exactly. game. Yeah. Halo 2 had one. Like a bunch of a bunch of things had I AI the movie was like the first big oh, like yeah. Oh god, that movie. Like advertising bad. campaign that worked like that. Uh but so Tech on this IRC, he saw some people talking about that terrorists sometimes would hide notes in image files. And he opened the trailhead image, uh, which said to find the hidden image. In a in a notepad, and he got an image. He got it. He got a message inside of the image, opened in notepad, which said in in like old Roman script, Tiberius Claudius Caesar says, and then just like gobbledygook cipher text. And he took this clue to mean that he needed to use the Caesar cipher. Which, if you don't know what that is, it's basically. I think we talked about this before. It's basically like a symbol substitution cipher. So if you imagine like mm. two alphabets sitting on top of each other. And then you shift it a number of times so that like if you shift it three times, right, A becomes D, right? Yeah. Or A becomes E and you shift the whole alphabet along that same shift. And that's basically how a Caesar cipher works. If you can't figure that out from my verbal explanation, just look it up. It's very simple. You'll get it in a second. Uh, but that's how you that's what he that's what he kind of guessed this meant. And then he realized that Tiberius Claudius Caesar was the fourth emperor of Rome. So he did a, a shift of four. And suddenly, when he applied that to this cipher text, instead of looking at gobbledygook, he got a URL, which in turn led him to another web page that had a picture of a wooden duck on it and another creepy message, which said, whoops, just decoys this way. Looks like you can't get uh, guess how to get the message out. Okay. Mm. Uh, and it was at this point that he started to get more involved. This is tech I'm talking about again. This is at this point he started getting more involved in the IRC channel himself. And once he found Marcus, who was also working on this puzzle independently and realized that like, you know, these two guys were operating on a level. They like knew their shit a lot better than a lot of the other people on there who were more like goobers mm -hmm. who were just sort of like repeating shit and messing stuff up for people. They eventually moved their, their like solving effort off of the main IRC chat and into a private one uh, with about 10 people in it that was called hashtag decipher and they all and this was a lot more organized and a lot more personal and a lot more like efficient uh 
Now, these other characters besides Marcus and Tech don't really come into the story as as I saw it very much, but it is worth getting into how this article describes this guy, John Hendrik Guttorm from Norway. He's like a 26-year-old stage tech for like rock shows and stuff, but it's like near the Arctic Circle. Huh. And he was he was quoted as saying, if you ask someone here what he does, he says fishing and fucking, and in the winter, less fishing. So I like this guy. He's a, he was a fun <laughs> part of this article for me. Uh, but anyway, this is the point where the article explains what ARGs are, uh, which we already kind of did. And then the president uh, for secret organizations you doing this type of thing, which they are, uh, uh, you know, theoretically doing here, which is recruiting new blood with online ciphers. So in addition to ARGs, which are sort of like this very entertainment based uh, version of this type of uh, communication, right? Uh, Alan Turing, who you know from the, uh, what was the name of the Oscar movie with uh, Fred, uh, what, what's that guy's name? Oh, I can't remember the name of it. It's, it's uh, Benedict Cumberbatch is in mm. the movie. It's about uh, Alan Turing. Yeah, yeah, He's, I know you. It's like that war movie. I cannot remember. Yeah, he made that. He made the Enigma Machine, basically. Uh, but he he used Enigma. an insanely hard crossword puzzle as a recruiting tool for code breakers during World War II. Uh, and in 2004, there was a billboard um, in Silicon Valley that popped up that Google put out that just said first pr first ten digit prime found in consecutive digits of e dot com. Which, if you solve that, it leads to seven million four hundred twenty-seven or seven billion four hundred twenty-seven million four hundred sixty-six thousand three hundred ninety-one dot com, which led oh. to another math problem, which actually led to a Google Labs page, which said one thing we learned while building Google is that it's easier to find what you're looking for if it comes looking for you. What we're looking for are the best engineers in the world, and here you are. So you could see how this could work as a legitimate recruiting oh, tool. That's actually very uh, interesting. I did not know Google did that. Yeah. Uh, also, the NSA has done stuff like this. The Navy, uh, the CIA, British Intelligence, uh, GCHQ, the like government communication headquarters or something. I think that's what they're called. They have all run or plan to run similar things like this, but none of them have claimed responsibility for 3301. And in fact, all of them have denied being involved with 3301 in any way. Uh, but anyway, uh, hashtag decipher this group that they made was now on the case. And after looking at a clue again, uh, the, you know, the clue that we just got that said, you can't guess how to get the, uh, the message out. They found this destegging program, uh, called outguess and steganography is the practice of hiding images inside of images, uh, through various means. And, uh, so this was a software that decrypts these images automatically and it led them, when they did this with the duck image, it led them to a thing that said, here is a book code. And then it was followed by 75 pairs of numbers in the format number colon number, like hmm. one colon 20 or three colon five or two colon three. And this got uh, the group thinking about another classic cipher that's almost as, almost as ubiquitous as the Caesar cipher. Uh, but it's named after a 16th century French diplomat who is called Blaise de Visionaire, who was famous for using coordinates just like these ones, uh, which pointed to specific letters and specific books. So if you can imagine, oh, you have a book, like say it's the Bible, and I have the same Bible, and I make like a little key to like, oh, like line 10, word 4, position 3, or whatever, that's mm -hmm. like a letter. And if you don't know what book it is, that's like an unbreakable cipher. And you know it what I mean? only right. works with that. Like the Bible, for example, if you have a different printing, like the, yep. the 1926 printing versus the 1901 printing, right? It, it will not match up. You will, yeah, will any an variations issue. of any variations of formatting or just like text that misalign everything. It has to be the exact same. So nowadays when people use it, a lot of the time it'll be like cipher text that you just take out of like a paste bin and put it in. But the yeah. traditional, but the traditional form is like books and it's yeah. freaking awesome. The old school style. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> which is awesome. Uh, so along with the book, uh, with the book code came a link to a post on Reddit. Uh, but instead of a book, uh, as you would expect it to be, it was just a bunch of letters and dashes and dots. And there was the word welcome in English and a picture of a welcome mat. And, and then it said problems. 
And then there was this like weird, like jacked up picture of like some medieval art, like a tapestry or a painting or something like that. And this really like stumped people. But then luckily, I don't know how this is possible, but this guy tech, he apparently learned uh, in fourth grade that the dots and dashes were some type of Mayan numeral system. I don't know. That's what he said. He said he solved it. He said it was a mind numeral system. They ran the pictures through Outguest and they got a PGP encryption key, which if you know what that is, uh, it's, I think it's called like pretty good privacy or something like that is the company, but it's a way to verify that messages are from the person that they say they're from. Uh, you, okay. That makes sense. It's like a way that if you have that key, you can like run it and be like, yes, this is, this is a verified thing. You can take this like cipher text and put it in. And then as long as that's there and then it comes back good through the encryption, that's how throughout this entire thing, they've been able to verify that all the pieces of communication that say they are from Cicada are actually from Cicada. Does that gotcha. make sense? Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Uh, so that's where they got that from. Uh, and it was in this key text that Marcus, the other guy, found the phrase Cicada 3301, which he f initially figured was the group's name. That's where he got that whole idea from plus a couple other things that we'll get into in a second uh but the problems section with the uh, medieval art was even more weird because it said when you put it through outguess it said the key has always been right in front of your eyes this isn't the quest for the holy grail stop making it more difficult than it is good luck 3301 hmm. um and at this point they were at an impasse for a minute they couldn't figure it out um but luckily, that dude from Norway, he came in clutch as a pattern expert. And while he did eventually end up solving this using the mind numeral system that Marcus figured out as a guide, just for my own enjoyment and yours, I want to share that he was also quoted as saying, I have a gift to find patterns where there aren't obvious patterns, so you could almost call me a schizophrenic. Which I don't think is accurate, but this guy to me is like... Nope. I don't think that is accurate I representation love, I, of what schizophrenia I, is. <laughs> I love this guy. He's he's crazy. It's, uh, it just seems like it really seems like so far up to where you were up to this point, uh, the little hints that you've put, it really seems like whatever they're, this group is trying to do, they're like trying to put together like the nerd Avengers. Yeah, they're just trying absolutely. to get like the smartest people because like that, that, that line that you said early on was like, you can't get the message out yourself for me was like, oh, that means they want to they need a group to work together. I don't know if that's exactly how it went down or how it is, but. With how you like you, you saying they pulled like 10, 10 people went off and did their own thing and then they like were hyper hyper focused on making this work. Do they have? Do, has anyone ever checked the timestamps of these things? Uh, my my the, I'm so curious about how you can imagine if we it, let's say the three of us were setting up an ARG, right? Yeah. Uh, which by the way, one day I'd love to do. But it, it'll we lead to the that. release of Chaluminati Kush. <laughs> that is dangerous. So. <laughs> My, but but the idea is like, okay, we set up thing number one. We have no idea how long it's going to take people. We have no mm. idea if people will find it. We have no idea any of it. But because we don't know, we have to set up phase number two and then phase number three. So I'm curious if there are timestamps or there's some way of knowing was all the stuff that you've heard so far and all the stuff you're going to hear already done and ready to go and just sitting there across 4chan and reddit and websites and all this stuff was it always just there in the background or was it slowly put up over time yeah no so a, D dm so, style <laughs> improv as they well, succeed, yeah so or <laughs> so according know. to this so according to the uh pgp verifier you can track the uh the dates of things and everything up to this point yes was already there because yep. as as you as will become very clear in a second, this was all done in a very short time. Everything that I'm explaining to you right now, this all happened very very quickly. Um, but uh, like like I'm saying, like I'm about to say that this this Norwegian guy, he actually had to go to the doctor. He had to go to an ophthalmologist because he was looking at his four monitors so long that yeah. his eyes literally went cockeyed. You know what I mean? <laughs> Jesus oh Christ. My God. <laughs> but this was in the first, like, this was less than a week after these things were initially found. I'm saying, I'm talking in the in the realm of, like, days, a day or so. Uh, oh, Jesus. Okay. So, anyway, so the, so the text decoded to something about King Arthur. Uh, it was, like, text about King Arthur. When they Googled it, it led them to a selection from this, like, sort of, like, historical text uh, it's like a collection of early British prose that's known as the Mabig 
Mabinogian. And within that, this was a Welsh romance called The Lady of the Fountain. Was this? That's what this text was from. So that that's about a knight that's too busy being cool and doing knight shit to worry about his girlfriend, and so she leaves him. Um, well, it sucks for her. She had a sweet knight boyfriend. Uh, but once that's they had your that takeaway, <laughs> that's, <it. laughs> that's like the Shield Knight anime. Um, <laughs> but uh, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, so they had the text, they put it in, and here's like a little blip from Marcus's notes showing how they used it to solve the book code, just in case anybody's having trouble figuring that out. The first code is one colon twenty. Taking the twentieth character of the first line of decoded text, we get a C. Continuing with the second line, two, three, an A is found, and so on and so forth. Eventually, this led to a complete ciphertext solution, which read, call us at telephone number 214-390-9608, okay? Uh, and at this point, hashtag decipher the IRC group. They're totally wigging out. This is very scary. They're afraid to call this number. Uh, Tech said he felt like he was a national treasure, literally. Uh, <laughs> they were all staying up late. They were doing 30-hour days. It had only been a couple days at this point, like I said. Started sketching tech out a little bit, and he was beginning to feel a little unsure of everything. But nevertheless, they called the number, which uh, has a Dallas area code, by the way. And they got a computerized voice, which gave them another clue, which said this. Very good. You have done well. There are three prime numbers associated with the original final.jpg image. 3301 is one of them. You will have to find the other two. Multiply all three of these numbers together and add a dot com to find the next step. Good luck. Goodbye. Uh, so looking back over their clues, they realized that final.jpg was the name of the original trailhead post that was going around 4chan. And after realizing that its pixel dimensions, which was 509 by 503, are both prime numbers, they multiplied all those numbers together to get 8 million uh, 845,145,127.com which led to the first imagery we ever got of an actual cicada in any of this and a running countdown clock, which I think speaks to what you were talking about, Jesse, which said patience is a virtue. Check back at 17 o'clock on Monday, January 9th, 2012 UTC, which our time window at the beginning of this was January 5th to 7th. Somewhere in there is where this started. So they reached the end of this and there was still like, and there was only like a day or so, between right. when they were done with what they were doing and so they, they the really next step. like ripped through that shit. I mean it was a global coordinated effort. Yeah. But yeah, they like chewed that shit right the fuck up. Which anybody who's ever run a game like this will tell you, like, you will you can never estimate how fucking oh, quick yeah. people can chew through this shit. And you'll never guess what type of dumb shit people can get stuck on for a year. You know what <laughs> I mean? Right. Um, so <clears throat> there was a really tense day. You know, just to give you an idea, you know, this was very much like a movie. Like, imagine like this happened the way that you would imagine it in a written movie. Like, one day they're doing this. They're like talking to people all over line. This like crazy guy from the Arctic who's like, I'm a schizophrenic is like solving puzzles. You're getting stuff. <laughs> I just there's see him in front of his four monitors, just seeing the Matrix, like you said. Yeah. There's a timer. You're like, that's tomorrow. What the fuck? <laughs> this all really happened. This is all like verifiable. This really mm -hmm. happened. This is like a. I vetted remember. article yeah i very much remember this happening on the internet i don't remember the details because i just didn't look into them at the time yeah so this day passes everybody's sweating their tits off it's totally crazy they refresh right at noon or whatever time it was 17 o'clock monday january 9th and they found something even crazier than what they expected to find which was 13 pairs of geographical coordinates seemingly leading to real locations all over the globe and the simple command to find our symbols at the locations nearest you. Now, when this happened, this is when shit exploded because instead of being a thing that 10 people can quietly work on on the internet, because this was on a website and they, you know, are clicking this shit, now everybody has these coordinates all over the world. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Locations are spread across four continents, everywhere from a rural road um, on the North Shore of Oahu to a busy intersection in Seoul, Korea, to like a weird alleyway next to the University of Warsaw in Poland. There was like people everywhere going to all these places, Arkansas, Paris. People were like just going around and everywhere that they would go, they would find these posters that were like taped up and they were on just like printer paper. And it was this sort of creepy looking, like sort of bit crushed image of a cicada top half of the page and a QR code 
on the bottom half of the page. And if you can imagine going and being like, this can't be real, and then going out and finding that shit, Mm -hmm. pretty fucking wild stuff. I don't know if that you've ever done anything like that before, but I'll tell you it is. I have never done an ARG um, simply because none are really near around me <laughs> that I, care I get about, hype. So. I get hype even when I find a geocache. You know what I mean? Like fair. <laughs> even if I even if I'm just like, it's there, it's there. I, I found it. Like it's a good feeling to, to find treasure. So you oh, can yeah. imagine it, that 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 rush of you succeeded <laughs> a treasure hunt. The question is, where is this all going to lead? I know. Right. So but but it does lead somewhere. Trust me. So tons of strangers I've trusted you before Faciane. I never let you down. Tons of strangers crowdsource trips to the coordinates, start finding posters. Marcus is like already on his parents' bad side because he's not sleeping. He's forgetting to eat dinner. He's not doing his homework like he normally does. Tech is like afraid he's going to like show up somewhere and get murdered by a stab monster. None of them, neither Tech nor Marcus were able to actually go anywhere and do anything. Uh, but that didn't stop them from examining the actual pictures that showed up online. And eventually, uh, their group found that all of the QR codes either pointed to one of two new book ciphers. Okay, The first one used the Encyclopedia Britannica 11th edition, and the other used a poem called Agrippa by William mm. Gibson, who if you don't know who that is, you should read some of his books. He's a great sci-fi author. If you listen to this show, you'll probably be really interested in some of the stuff that he's written. Uh, and just in case you're wondering, he too has also denied involvement in these events in any way he's still alive or at least he was in 2015 i'm not sure if he is now uh and also this isn't really relevant but speaking of the poem agrippa i just thought this was cool uh agrippa was originally only distributed on floppy disk and once Mm. somebody put it into a computer to read it one time it would then encrypt itself so nobody else could ever read it so which is like a cool Mm. little thing but Mm. it you know kind of explains why maybe people were like could Did you this. do this? Did you yeah, do this? Yeah, yeah. It, it fits past yeah, events. Similar kind of vibe. Um, but also, it started to seem like 3301 themselves were getting a little cheesed off uh, because of how people were treating this thing like an ARG and solving it online as a group for fun. <laughs> how dare you treat this thing, thing the way serious. it's presented to you? <laughs> well, I think they really intended people to take it seriously, and they were kind of getting annoyed that like it was this huge global group effort that was like fun. Uh, Because both of the clues had this other warning with it that said, you've shared too much at this point. We want the best, not the followers. Thus, only the first few there will receive the prize or something like that is what it said, Mm, right? Okay, okay. So at this point, the freakiness of this thing is starting to hit like max levels. Uh, Even beyond not trusting Cicada, solvers are starting to become cautious of each other. People are starting uh, to drop out of the search. So the, the 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 IRC group that they had is like getting a little smaller, like the little private one. Um, People just getting to give disinterested. You an idea, yeah, just to give you an idea of how weird things were getting, there was another, there was a Chilean prodigy child in the group who was called Joaquin, who had worked hard to preserve his identity. And he got a call that was like an emergency test tone on his phone at like 2 a.m. And he said- Sounds like the men in he, yeah, black. I know. He said that got me so paranoid. So I had a contingency plan with a friend where if I disappeared, I would try to leave behind evidence. Like this dude was like fucking scared. So uh, it also got so competitive at this point, right? That Decipher started making fake clues to start throwing other groups off because they really wanted to win this thing. And eventually they got so paranoid that they adopted the slogan, everyone except you is Cicada. So just to Hmm. give you an idea of how fast this evolved, in like this week span or whatever. From things zero were starting to conspiracy to get, in a few days. Yeah, things were starting to get pretty fucked up. Uh, and things hit a fever pitch for the group when Tex got doxxed. He didn't want to get doxxed. That was like his big fear. He was already very afraid and he got doxxed. It really affected him. Yeah. Uh, but shortly thereafter, it doesn't matter. Everything changed. And the entire flow of the story goes in a way you didn't expect for a second. Okay. About one month later... On February 6th, Marcus got a personal email from 3301, which said, and this is a kind of a long one. It said, congratulations, your month of testing has come to an end. Out of the thousands who attempted it, you are one of only a few who have succeeded. There is one last step, although there will not be any hidden codes or secret messages or physical treasure hunts. This last step is only honesty. We have always been honest with you. And we expect you to be honest with us in return. You have all wondered who we are. And so we shall now tell you 
We are an international group. We have no name. We have no symbol. We have no membership rosters. We do not have a public website, and we do not advertise ourselves. We are a group of individuals who have proven ourselves much like you have by completing this recruitment contest, and we are drawn together by common beliefs. A careful reading of the text used in the contest would have revealed some of these beliefs. That tyranny and oppression of any kind must end. That censorship is wrong. And that privacy is an inalienable right. We are not a hacker group. Nor are we a wares group. Uh, which if you don't know what that is, that's like people who share torrents and shit online. Uh, we do not engage in illegal activity, nor do our members. If you are engaged in illegal activity, we ask that you cease any and all illegal activities or decline membership at this time. We will not ask questions if you decline. However, if you lie to us, we will find out. You are undoubtedly wondering what it is that we do. We are much like a think tank in that our primary focus is on researching and developing techniques to aid the ideas that we advocate. Liberty, privacy, security. And then it ends with a couple questions. It says, do you believe that every human being has a right to privacy and anonymity? Do you believe that information should be free? Do you believe that censorship harms humanity? Okay. That's the email that they wrote. And then Marcus wrote back, without a doubt, count me in, but with one reservation. You have presented two conflicting ideas, resistance of censorship and a requirement to refrain from illegal behavior. What of the people who would cons what of the people who would censor certain aspects of culture what of the pirates i believe that there should be no restriction on the sharing of information do you ask me and the other chosen ones to cease sharing of copyrighted material thank you for a life-changing experience did they ever reply well i'll tell you in a second <laughs> but we have to decide if this is the end of part one or not uh, that's an interesting question. We're only like 37 minutes in. We're about at the halfway point. So I mean, if we're at the halfway point. Hit us with the rest, you yeah, tease. I think, I think you go. I think you, you go. You tease, give us the rest. All right. So he sent that email on February 6th, uh, 2012. And a few weeks later, on February 28th, 2012, Marcus gets a reply, which was signed with the same PGP, just like everything else. Mm -hmm. Uh, Hello. The next step is finally here. And it included a username and it included a password and it included an address on a dark web site and said, welcome. Apparently 20 other people received similar messages, including tech. And for the most part, they all accepted <clears throat> and eventually ended up in a chat on the dark web with not just each other, but alleged senior members of Cicada itself. Okay. Okay. They explain they still, that they, they, this is, before we move forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To me, it's coming off like like anonymous. I know they're not hackers. They claim to not be hackers, but they're like like they're like anonymous, except like more up their own ass, right? That's how it's coming across. Like we like to think and think tank about philosophical things that humanity needs. Like motherfuckers, what are you actually doing? Yeah, I mean, if you guys are reading DC Comics right now out there, listeners, there's like this event called Leviathan where this like group is like they they like teleport away all the intelligence agencies on the earth and like make them into a sovereign nation. That's like dedicated to like rebooting civilization to make it better for people. Right. Yep. And this to me is like the same idea as that, but just like done on like Skype, <laughs> you know, I, I don't know. Yeah. We'll, we'll, no, we'll I'm see. with you. I'm with yeah. you. I'm with you. Uh, but yeah, so they explained that the organization they were now a part of came from a group of internet buddies with similar ideals who started a secret group in the interest of combining their respective talents to secretly develop kind of the same way that people made Bitcoin in like sort of like segmented off groups where you don't know anything you more than you need to to get your part of the job done, right? Like kind of how a heist works, mm -hmm. right? Secret little cells all over the world to further the causes of anonymity, privacy, and encryption for free, right? And it sounds pretty culty, but apparently it was fairly practical, like in terms of like what they were trying to do and how they were trying to do it. And it was organized and people just kept recruiting more and more people until they knew, uh, like, like there was people who were like groups of friends who were bringing each other in and kind of expanding in an organized way 
uh, until there's members all over the place. That's how they did the, you know, the dead drops. You know, that's how they were able to do all that stuff. And although it has no affiliation with any government or military, various members allegedly are parts of various organizations, often in the field of military or corporate intelligence from big companies and governments around the world, according to them, right? Okay. Uh, and also, this is just kind of interesting and not super mysterious, but like all the cicada imagery apparently comes from the fact that they see cicadas as nature's cryptographers because they use a secret code to... Oh, the way they communicate with one another? Well, basically what they do is they don't come out. They only emerge every 13 or 17 years. Hmm. And they are both prime numbers, 13 and 17. And because they do it in this weird configuration, it throws off any predators that would begin to rely on the cicada for yeah, they, regular like, every food. year they show up at this time. I can yeah. eat them all. <laughs> yeah. So it's like a secret. It's like a, it's like a, it's like a cipher basically that's, that's mm, yeah, no, protecting that's really cool, them. Actually. Yeah. And that's, and that's kind of like their whole philosophy in a nutshell. Right. Uh, it's also cool that 13 and 17 are prime numbers. It's also cool that 3301 is a twin prime number, both forward and backward. It's a prime mm. number. Uh, but anyway, this, Unquote unquote class of cicada solvers that solved this version of the cicada puzzle, which I remind you, they say that it's not always like a cipher that they use to recruit people. It just so happened that they were going for crypt like cryptographers this time around, and so they used this, uh, you know, method of doing this. Uh, this class of twenty or so that included Tech and Marcus was referred within cicada as Brood B dot O. B lowercase b dot zero h huh <clears throat> and they were tasked with working together to create software that fit the mo of the organization to be distributed for free online so that's what their like little cells mission was right and eventually after collaborating with these people this led to something they invented that was called the cicada anonymous key escrow system or cakes which was a technology mm. that could protect whistleblowers by automatically disseminating sensitive information to oh. the masses in the event that this whistleblower fails to check in by getting shot or kidnapped or put in jail or whatever, getting hurt in some way. It's like a fail safe for the information to get out there. And they actually made this technology, right? Uh, which is pretty crazy. Uh, but the thing was now, though, that uh, now that it wasn't like this fun ass puzzle with all this mystery to right. it. And they were basically just like working as like grunts in like a human interest charity. Now, uh, people just started dropping out, disappearing, fading away, which slowly, but surely happened to pretty much everyone in the group, even tech that was part of B dot OH, probably because he was already so wigged out by the whole thing, except yeah. for Marcus, Marcus stayed. He was the only guy there for a long part of it by himself working on cakes and slowly getting bummed out while simultaneously communicating with Cicada and being like, please recruit more guys. I don't know what the hell. I need more people to help me with this. This is bullshit. I'm like doing extra homework. Right, I don't want right. to do this. Suddenly, you're, you're like you said, you're kind of just became a cog in the machine. <laughs> like a group project. You know what I mean? Where when, you're when like everybody else is not doing up. anything. Yeah. And so he didn't hear anything back from them for months. But a year on now from when this originally started Jeez. now in January of 2013... Uh, an anonymous IRC user, <clears throat> there was like basically kind of like a fervor again because it was like a year anniversary of the Cicada thing. So the mm. IR IRC channel is kind of popping off and an anonymous user popped in and posted a now famous post known as The Warning, which started out by saying, I was part of what you call 3301 slash Cicada for more than a decade and I'm here to warn you, stay away. Okay. He said he was a foreign military officer who was scouted by the organization against his, like, without his knowledge. Like, they came to him and they've been like, we've been watching you. <clears throat> we need you for this goal. He initially found it to be inspiring, echoing a lot of the stuff that the Brood B.O. members said about their ideology, goals for the common good. But he also said their beliefs are almost cultish in nature, that they revered, quote, the global brain as another type of God, mm. and called them a, quote, Religion disguised as a progressive scientific organization. Okay. So nobody on the regular internet knew whether this was true or not. This was all just stuff that was like this One guy. Rando came in and was some just dude like, hey, you're fucking, all yeah. Wrong. But people like Marcus and Tech, 
you know, who were part of this whole thing, right. found it pretty disturbing how accurate it was, and that sort of gave it credence in their minds. Uh, but also, they maybe suspected that it was coming from inside the group to sort of try and scare people off and show them like, no, this is not like a game that you should be playing for fun. This is like a fucking real thing that if you care about it, you should focus on, right? Which I think was a big point of frustration for them as designers of this thing. Right. It seems like. Um, oh, yeah, it seems like that right from the beginning when they're like, stop sharing it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but just a few hours after the warning was posted, lo and behold, another Cicada image one year later was posted for the first time since the previous February. And it read, hello again. Our search for intelligent inv individuals now continues. The first clue is hidden within this image. Find it, and it will lead you on the road to finding us. We look forward to meeting the few that will make it all the way through. Good luck, 3301. Uh, and then this year's puzzle, the 2013 puzzle, was just as tough as the previous one, if not harder. Included all types of new things. There was an Aleister Crowley book, and if you don't know who he is, he's like an occult, weirdo, British magician guy who liked to have sex with other people's wives a lot. And uh, there was an audio clue that was like guitar music that like, when you analyze the frequencies, you could like find this hum and like do like a spectrogram huh. analysis. And there was a F that I never figured that there was like a message stupid. in there. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, that message said like the instar tunneling to the surface, we must shed our own circumferences, find divinity within and emerge. Right. So things were starting to get a little scarier, a little more like zealot culty. Yeah. Uh, but, but other than that, everything was basically going just like the last time there were more QR posters on telephone poles, that type of thing. But eventually people just started saying that they weren't getting invites, even though they'd solved the puzzle. They were like, I got to the end and nobody's emailed me or that the people who made it, maybe they were saying like, if you did make it, maybe you weren't allowed to say that you made it this time or whatever. Um, and Marcus hadn't heard anything either from, from Cicada in the dark web chat for some time at this point. Um, but eventually another guy from the brood that he was in, a guy called Sage contacted him and was like, somebody contacted me with a verified message. They told us we're laid off. They didn't tell me anything else. And then he was like, what? And he went back into the dark website and it was gone. He couldn't get back onto it. It had been, huh. it had been removed. Um, and so Wait, that, quit. so that was crazy. And he just was like, oh, I guess it must be over. You know, nothing came of it this time around, whatever. No one knew for sure what was going on. Uh, but, but they at this made time, their software though. They made it, yeah. Hmm. They made it. Marcus, Marcus, like largely finished it himself. Um, and no one knew for sure. There was a couple experts that were asked at this point what they thought was happening. Some guy said he thought it was like a government agency, but then as he went on, he was like, actually, you know what? It's probably like a company that's trying to find something very specific, and they're just putting on a ruse to like fuck with people. Uh, hmm. Or this other person thought it was probably just a group of hackers who was like jacking off basically in a group chat just yeah, being like, like fucking genius we are yeah uh but then uh one year later again on january 6 2014 almost to the day a twitter account called at one two three one five zero seven zero five one three two one made a familiar looking post uh with white text on black that read hello Epiph epiphany is upon you your pilgrimage has begun enlightenment awaits Right, so now we're fully in like crazy town mode with this third. Yeah, we we have crossed the line. This third year, yeah, and at this point the article ends. Okay, so this is where the article was. The article is from January of 2015. Uh, mentions that Marcus like disseminated his code onto the dark web for people to use because it was like in line with the uh, sort of like values of Cicada to make it free to anybody who wanted to like take it and run with it mm -hmm. to whatever end. Right. And uh, <clears throat> the puzzles this time, though, were very different. Um, and they said that Marcus was kind of working on it again and that there's people out there that are trying to work on this, like, 58-page document of runic script now that's, like, really creepy. And, yeah, so that's where the article end ended in 2015, but that is nowhere near the end of the story. Basically... There's a wiki that's run by the like cicada solvers IRC, the big, the like big the, main yeah. IRC group. They have a big, nice wiki that tells you everything that's been happening and like how people solve different things. Um, and it's like a nice big community resource that people still update whenever there's anything. Uh, but that year, the Twitter puzzle continued with a 
Self-Reliance and Other Essays by Ralph Waldo Emerson, Book Cipher. But then it went hard left and became a chain of dot onion links, which are like exclusive to Tor, which is the like dark web browser. Gotcha. Okay? So a lot of these have expired, but like this was like next level hard, like a new level of crazy puzzles. These beautiful runic pages sort of trickled out. They became a, a work known as the Liber Primus. That's like an encrypted text. Um, some progress has been made. There was like one or two pages solved, uh, partial solves, but nothing new really came from Cicada. The next January uh, in 2015, there was nothing new because people weren't fucking solving this thing. Uh, and so that was the first time since 2012 that there was no communication from them in January. And once again, everybody thought it was dead until July when Cicada surfaced again. Uh, and they needed to do that to distance themselves from another organization that started calling themselves Cicada 3301, which was hacking Planned Parenthood. It was trying to <laughs> attack oh, okay. Planned Parenthood. Yeah. And so they put out a message that was like signed with their PGP that was like, some news organizations have recently claimed that 3301 is tied to the illegal activities of a group that has claimed responsibility for attacks against Planned Parenthood. We do not engage in illegal activities. We are not associated with this group in any way, nor do c condone their use of our name, number, or symbolism, 3301, right? So then that was in July of 2015. That went on for a while. No new puzzle in 2016, but this time there was a message on the Twitter again encouraging people to keep solving the Liber Primus, even though a page hadn't been solved in two years. And it said, uh, hello, the path lies empty. Epiphany seeks the devoted. Liber Primus is the way. Its words are the map, its meaning is the road, and their numbers are the direction. Seek and you will be found. Good luck. 3301. Beware false paths. Okay? So, that whole time, people have been trying to solve the Liber Primus, including Marcus, who originally solved this whole thing. No meaningful advancements have been made, uh, in public at least, since... Um, but there's been a couple good documentaries. If you ever watch um, this YouTube channel called Great Big Story, there's like a huge four part um, thing that has interviews with all these people in it and stuff. If you want to watch more on it um, and it's all really interesting. And I think there's another documentary that's coming out soon or something like that. In life, and it's still up, right? The, the puzzle still hasn't been solved. As, at least you oh, said, no. like you said publicly. No, no. Yeah. you. If you go to uh, the Cicada Solvers wiki, it's called... Um, uncovering cicada everything is there for you if you want to go like fuck around with this there's there's still people trying to do it uh but there was one more instance of verified contact with cicada in april of 2017 which was re reported by a new user in the irc called silent but it was p-s-i-l-y-n-t-1 silent yeah. one on the cicada solvers irc verified Here's how he found it. He said, I was looking for the last PGP encrypted message from Cicada, you know, the old one linked from Twitter that said to verify with PGP. Searched for 7835090F on Pastebin, sorted by date, and there it was. I thought it was the same. Validated it, realized it wasn't the same, realized the Pastebin date, and Brotherbin caught me posting in a Discord, right? Its message was not super exciting. It was the same as before. It said, beware false paths. Always verify PGP signature. But other than that, that's it. Cicada, mystery. both as a puzzle to be solved, its intentions, who those people actually were, whether or not anything was actually real or not, uh, huh. is unknown. But uh, hopefully one day someone will solve it. Uh, well, it definitely kind of leaves a lasting impression of like very bizarrely like amateur cultish. Yeah, but the, the thing is the puzzles are stumping geniuses, number one, which is mm -hmm. like crazy and then if you look at these if you look at this runic thing like i'm gonna just like look up the liber primus if you have a second like yeah, yeah pull up images of that of that stuff and just describe what you see because it's not like the rest of the puzzles are very like sort of like piecemeal you know they're very like this is very fancy looking internet it looks like looking. fantasy writing it looks like lord of the rings writing <laughs> yeah the liber primus is like a beautifully made like book of runes that has like has like you know yeah, filigree and stuff around it, and you and and the if you go, you can look on the on the page. I'll give you the link if you want to show it to people. There's a, there's one that has there's a couple of the pages that have been solved. Let me just drop this here for you. Oh, this quick. is wow, this is fascinating. So the first real page of this book, when translated, says a warning: 
Believe nothing from this book except what you know to be true. Test the knowledge, find the truth, experience your death. Do not edit or change this book or the message contained within either the words or their numbers for all is sacred. Yeah. What? Yeah, what? Don't believe it, but it's all sacred. Yeah, and there's there's a few other pages that were like partially solved. You can you can you can look at them. I mean, a lot of the text is here that you can read because it's just all runic, but there, yeah, there's it's, so it's like one right here. I'll read this one out loud. Welcome, welcome, pilgrim, the great journey toward the end of all things. It is not an easy trip, but for those who find their way, here it is, a necessary one along the way. We'll find an end to all struggle and suffering your innocence your illusions your certainty and your reality ultimately will discover an end to yourself yeah i mean it's it's pretty it's pretty nutty and i thought there was only two pages solved fully but i think that's just because a lot of the other ones it's just like the meaning's not clear a lot of the text is here solved but so much there's 56 unsolved pages i guess of this thing, that's crazy. I'm just like it's it's really pretty, and and, it, and what what little like information that that we you've been able to eke out of it with what their intentions are. You you talk about the god amongst all whatever. It very much sounds like collective unconscious, like trying to d debate or philosophize what is what is reality. What is, like losing yourself and end to self. Rem it makes me think of like you know like a uh, ego death, like the the yeah. end of yourself as an individual and, and awakening as a understanding of 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 your own true nature as a human or something along those lines yeah and the and the idea that the genuineness of this is in question to me i i'm not questioning that so much like the idea that there's like a group of people out there that are like super smart nerds that believe in this stuff and they're this is the way they're expressing themselves seems very believable to me and i don't yeah i don't believe that it's just a game somebody made up i think people are serious here but i just think that they're really serious about who they get involved and they really i don't know if they've evolved to a point where they're like you know going beyond the you know into the metaphysical realms here but there's some yeah. crazy oh, no. ciphers there's some crazy stuff and uh i don't know it it, it kind of like also opens this door to this like great genre of internet diving that if you haven't done it before you totally should which is massive worldwide treasure hunts that never ended <laughs> I can't imagine how many are actually still there, like. I remember out there. there was. I remember there was some books that were called like the Alchemist Dar or something like that that came out like fifteen or twenty years ago that were like children's books that were kind of stupid and kind of had like kind of creepy art. But the guy who made them was like an eccentric rich person, and they were like global sensations that like had all these puzzles. And there was one where this guy buried figurines all over the place, and they're still trying to solve that. And then there's a game called Masquerade back in the day that had a similar thing. And I remember there was like huh. an Atari game or something that had a similar type of thing. Yes, I remember the Atari one. That was for adventure, maybe? Uh, or, or there was like a, multiple games. And if you like beat each one, then you sent it in, you're supposed to get a prize. It was like but each the prize game. Never yeah, it was like each game was like a different season or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, they, they like. It ran out of money before it finished. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I remember. Do you remember the million dollar, uh, the million dollar competition for? Oh God, that psychic game that bombed on the original Xbox. That was supposed to be a trilogy. Oh yeah. Um, Advent Rising. Yeah, Advent Rising. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, um, that was fun, dude. Cicada. Like, it. I didn't know there was more to Cicada because the last I had heard of Cicada was around, I guess, like the 2015 mark where they fell off, and I was like, oh, I remember hearing that it was just like it led to nothing or it was a nothing. Like a heaping pile of nothing, but I'm I'm actually it's it's I'm interested to see if they ever if it ever resurfaces anybody ever finishes decoding what they're supposed to decode. Maybe this episode will be the impetus. Maybe Spur somebody out there, maybe somebody Spur out there is a master code breaker who can come with their with their palm bloom <laughs> uh, lapel and, and solve our code for us. Um, but I feel like this is the closest and most realistic origin story that we're ever going to get for something that's actually close to the real Illuminati. So that's why I chose this. And I think that there is a place for you in this organization if you can find something <laughs> of meaning in these pages. And and if and if you do it, let us know. Yeah, please. If you <laughs> if you find any updates that you find on on Cicada thirty three oh one Please let us know. And this was so fucking fascinating to me. 
I I can't believe that it's a real thing. Uh, it's very it's cool just exciting that it exists. And if you get in, share the podcast with all of Cicada 3301. Get them into it. Yeah. We may not be the most intelligent thing for them to listen to since they're all a bunch of hyper geniuses, but a good laugh is good for the soul. That's true. Thank you, Alex, for uh, for taking us down that wild ride. Jesse is looking like his mind is slowly unraveling, and I'm not sure what's happening. But over the past just, like, I think 30 seconds... Solved. Yeah, his eyes went wide. <laughs> He's read the Libra Primus. He understands the secrets of everything. I can't. <clears throat> Damn, this is so infuriating. There is a game on Steam that I think it would be amazing if we played, but uh, it's called like Time Something or Damn, I can't remember the name of it. It is a game that was. The premise is very simple. You, the player get a letter in the mail that's like hey i need you to work with me on this thing and it literally starts what this is if you want to play like a safe version of hacking codes and cryptology and all that mm. stuff it's a game about that and it but it also is about ufos jfk assassination time oh, travel it's <laughs> All right. Freaking bonkers. I need, to, I need to come visit LA and we need it's to play this. It's so bonkers. <laughs> I played, it's in two parts. And I played the first part and I tried to play the second, but because the, the first and the second part came out so far apart, I forgot all the code breaking I learned huh. from the first part and was like, I don't know how to play this game anymore. So I I don't remember what it's called, but I know Is it, it exists. Is it the Black I Watchman? I played it. What now? Is it the Black Watchman? No, it's Is it literally. The temporal in... Is it the Temporal Invasion? The Temporal Invasion is the name of it. Yes. The, temp the temporal that invasion. Y'all, it's crazy but donker donkers. It's so wild. And it's like a very simple, not overly complex game where you scan pictures, you resize things, you change the color mm. on files. You you literally have to go to the internet and learn decryption things and run. Um, they, they make it so you can actually find stuff. So a great example is there's one puzzle where there was a sound file and the sound file is like, right but if you learn what the what it is you need to decrypt it, you can literally go online and there's a program online that like oh you just move this there and it like decrypts it or there's one that is dots and dashes and if you just enter the dots and dashes into a thing online it'll tell you what it is but it's like so crazy y'all you need to play it you need to play if this is that sounds fun. if this interests you and you want to do this in a safe thing where you're not like you know tech worried that someone's going to call you at 2 a.m yeah, <laughs> this is for you. This it's so cool. That's you dope. really need to. I'm I'm a hundred percent in. I'm looking at it right now. This looks I'll awesome. I'll come visit. Yeah, I'll come fly neat. out for a couple days and we can play that or something. It'd Great. be wild. It'd be wild to play. Hell yeah, dudes. Well, thank you, Alex, for taking us down this wild rabbit hole of another Ooh. internet mystery of the infinite in internet mysteries that seem to exist at your very fingertips. I hope you all enjoyed listening. We're gonna say goodbye, but before we do, hey. If you want to support us, check out patreon.com slash Pod. Help us, uh, support us, and we would just have loved to basically to make more content for you guys. It's all about just being able to make more for you. Put that coffee so check that out. in the grinder, baby. Hell yeah. Slam. Give me fuel so I can sit up reading Hunt for the Skinwalker fuel all night long. Fuel to the fire. Fuel to the fire. As always, if you want to reach out to us, you can find us on our socials. For myself, it's at Mathis Games. For Alex, it's at Fasian AA. And for Jesse, it's at Jesse Cox. And if you want to tweet at the podcast directly, it's at Chaluminati Pod. Same thing for subreddit. We are now on Deezer. If you have Deezer, or Yo, you know people Deezer. who have Deezer only use Deezer, we got it. We literally got approved the day of this recording. We So go check that out. Uh, you can go ahead and give us reviews over there. Or wherever you listen to us, go drop us a review. We love you. And we will see you next time. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye.